nothing left for nothing city. <laughs> so when we leave tonight, it's gonna be city, city, city. Nothing, 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 nothing. Vancouver! <laughs> Woo! What Vancouver? Yes? Sort of? Are you a bi Vancouver? <laughs> so you're Edmonton Coover. You're a bi Canadian. <laughs> nice. We like that. Captain Jack uh, astride a very large bomb. 
<laughs> publicity photographs. It was the first episode where Jack rides the bomb off and uh, the doctor and Rose think he's going off to explode and he's going to die, right? So he, he thinks he is too to go, uh, 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 you know, save, to save everything and to take, uh, uh, you know the story. <laughs> gets around, circulates, and I'm at another convention and I'm sitting and, you know, doing my sitting and going, hey, what's going on? Yeah, no, sorry, I can't take pictures, they won't let you, I can't pose, it'll take as many as you like. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> let me sign for you. Oh. Guy walks up and he goes, please go over, please go over, Excuse me? I don't speak to my mind. <laughs> um, and I said to him, I said, what is it? Well, my wife and I, he's dressed in a Klingon outfit, completely. And his wife, as a female Klingon, he said, we have a gift for you. I went, oh, great, chocolate, I love it, you know, a drawing, something, a letter. No, he gives me a box with my photograph on the front of it, and in place of the box, a marital aid. <laughs> a massager. For those, I think you parents get really like, ooh. <laughs> a massager. I was astride a massage machine. And um, I went, please tell me that's not really in there. You went, oh yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Put it over. He goes, open it up and look at it. I went, no, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine. Whole line of people. So I took it home to Scott and I said, Scott, we've been given a gift. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to see it? He went, sure. And I gave him the box. He went, oh, Jesus. <laughs> he said, who gave it to you? I said, it's looking at it. He said, throw it away, they're filthy. <laughs> Anyway. 
but next question. <laughs> I, the, the, the bounce back, can you put the questions so I can hear them a little bit and the speaker's coming towards me? Is that alright? Go ahead. Um, I'm sorry about your head, I hope it's better. Um, but I was just wondering what your most memorable experience on the set of Dr. Who is. The most memorable experience? Yeah. <laughs> well, there's, a, there's, a, there's there, again, there's lots. And uh, I always talk about the first thing that springs to my head. And I love you. I really do. Who said that Canadians were conservative? Not the Canadians I know. Um, first thing that sprung to mind was an episode that David and I were filming, um, and I think it was the ones with the. I, I, I want to say it was End of Days. Was that with the, 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 the Jumanji? You know what I'm talking about? Or did you not watch Doctor Who? The, the creatures in the quarry with the, the teeth. Yeah? Who? Oh? Utopia, thank you, thank you. I've done so many Doctor Who books from there. Uh, and and the, um, we were doing a sequence where we were discussing something and we had to eat chips. French fries, British chips, really thick chips with vinegar and salt on them. And David and I, both being from Scotland, love salt and vinegar chips. And we were like, oh, two o'clock in the morning, we'll need chips by then and we'll be, we'll be ready for them. We were filming outside, and uh, sorry, in a, like an outdoor location, but it was covered. And we're sitting there, and so we start filming the sequence and we're, we're going, okay, wide shot, get the chips, yeah. <laughs> Cut! Let's do it again! Action! Jump in time! Cut! Okay, take 47! And action! I was so sick of chips by the end of that. We could not eat any more. It was absolutely appalling. But even with the, in that sequence, the things that I remember the most are the things like running. With David, we always used to try to outrun each other. He would win. Because I would let him. Because it was his show. <laughs> no, we always used to do it. And we would be doing the running sequences. Uh, I would be in my long. We had two different coats for running in because we had the hero coat, which was the longer coat, so it blew in the wind, right? And the doctor had one also, as I did. And then we had shorter coats, which were running, because then when you're running and your legs are flicking up in the back, you didn't catch on the tail of the coat because of quite a few times David and I ended up. <laughs> and that's not sexy. So um, we had the running coat, and David's going, David's giving it, and he wears Converse. So David's going, and I'm going, after five takes, I'm like that, slow down! David, yeah. all that kind of stuff is what sticks in my mind. It was fun, we had a great time, and also we got to laugh about it. So those are kind of some of the memories. Next. Oh, I'm really out of breath. Hi. 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 I saw those pictures, uh, those pictures that you tweeted on Twitter with Misha at Comic-Con. Say it again? Those pictures you tweeted with Misha at Comic-Con. And so I was wondering, I know you're in Vancouver a lot, if 
you have ever had a chance to get star on Supernatural? Would you? And if so, would you want to play like the angel or the demon? Would I want to play angel or a demon? Yeah. <laughs> If it was with Misha? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would definitely want to be bad. I think I, I, I like it at the moment playing a bad guy. I do. Play a bad guy on Arrow, and I, I, I really like that. But what I, what I try to so I would love to do maybe a demon and uh, make him bad but likable. Because that's more fun for you guys. If you guys are like, I totally hate him. I love him. He's so cool, but I hate him. How could you do that? I totally understand. Oh my gosh. Wow. So yeah, I think I'd be a demon. But there's other shows that I'd like to be on. I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, uh, Walking Dead. And uh, Billy Gerhardt, who directs some, who directed a, a lot of season one and I think season two, he uh, directed Torchwood, uh, Miracle Day, and uh, a lot of it. so yeah. And I also uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah. I'm not hairy enough. <laughs> and uh, the, I'm, when I go back. Uh, I'm going back to the UK in November and I'm also going to speak to uh, Gavin, my manager, because um, I'm probably going to get it wrong. Is it, is, it's not Highlander, is it? The new, the new one they're doing. Outlander, sorry. Yes. Filming it in Scotland. And it's, it's all to do with Scottish people. So perfect, isn't it? And maybe I'll be a bad guy in there. Or a good guy. It's just a job. I want a job. <laughs> Yes. How do you find balance in your life when a lot of your time not filming is spent traveling all around, coming to things like this? I find a balance. I don't mind it. This is like a vacation to me. <laughs> Seriously, because I'm coming, although I don't get to see the cities uh, that I visit, because I, again, that, you know, some people may think I'm being schmaltzy or I'm just going, too bad, you think what you like. This is absolute honest to God truth. If Scott can answer this, and people who know me know this, I get invited to these things, and I know you guys spend a lot of money to come here. So my motto is I come because you guys have given me the life that I've always dreamed about. So therefore, for me to take a weekend out of my, my life, or a couple weekends a year out of my life, or however many, it's really not a big sacrifice. And I get flown on nice aircrafts, and they give me what my seats work. <laughs> <laughs> they give me nice food, I arrive here, I grew up in a lovely hotel, and I'm looked after, and then I get to see all of you guys, and that to me is a lot of fun, so it's not really hard to balance that out, because at the end of the day, I wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't for you, so that's why I do them, and that's what I love about them. Calgary in April. But I love how Canadians say, I say Calgary, and everyone who comes up to me, they're like, Calgary. Um, well, people from Edmonton say Calgary. And they call it Edmonton. Like I call it Los Angeles. And Palma Spring Gays. Answer that question. <laughs> I, I, okay, we're going to bomb my pants. I'm really having a hard time understanding people. Is there anything we can do about the sound? Please, where's the sound, people? Thank you, go ahead. Uh, I was going to ask if you plan on keeping your pants on, but you already answered that question. <laughs> Next year? 
I don't know. They have to invite me. Um, just come! Just go! Oh. Just go! You can't just show up. <laughs> um, and, and sometimes uh, conventions don't like to re-invite people, the same, the same people the next year. But the way that it'll, it'll work is if all of you get online and email them and say, we want John Barrowman back. <laughs> It's, uh, you know, 
That's all I can really say. But if they asked me, of course I would go back. I've always said that. I would love to play Captain Jack. And even the, the producers of Arrow, when I first signed on to Arrow, they said to me, you know, John, if you need to go do anything with Doctor Who, because Andy Kreisberg is a, is a huge fan, and followed me on Doctor Who Torch, and he said, you can go and do it. Because also, they're not stupid. Look at all you guys who were Doctor Who and Torture fans and followed me on to Adam. So, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a good thing. So who knows what might happen in the future? <laughs> yes! Uh, have you noticed any major differences between doing British television and doing American television? Yes, American television is a lot more food on the set. <laughs> Yeah, British television, the, I remember when we, were, we took out uh, Kai Pfeiffer and cast over to Torchwood to film it uh, in the parts in the Rasili Beach in Wales, and uh, Kai was like, <laughs> it's all so freezing, and you know, Eve and I, living in Wales, we were like, on our t-shirts, like, eh, it's nothing, that's not, it's not cold, it's only minus 60. <laughs> you Canadians understand what I mean? Your skin is pink and raw, and you're like, I don't need a sweater! <laughs> Look at this! Oh, it's really cold! <laughs> so, Mackay, in America, every five, five, ten minutes, if someone walks around with a tray going, craft service! And they have sandwiches and cakes, and you name it, you can have something made for you, you can have lattes, you can have anything you want, blah, blah, blah. We in Britain kind of look at the money for that, should be spent on being on camera, not in people's tummies. <laughs> so Makai's over there and he's like, oh, where's craft service? I'm like, Makai, there's no craft service. He's like, I need some craft service. And all of a sudden, someone comes out with a tray, a cup of tea and a biscuit. Here's your craft service. <laughs> there you go. And he's like, this is it. I'm like, yep, that's it. That's all you're going to get for the next six hours. So enjoy. <laughs> so it is. The big difference is food. But I do understand that the people who need to I mean, I'm all for, because uh, the actors, no, actor, actors and actors just don't really eat all that food. I mean, come on, if they do, they go like that, come on, oh, then they go, oh, <laughs> oh really? <laughs> um, but they, uh, uh, the thing with, I think, the guys who work on the set, who are the, the grips, the crew, the, the guys who uh, work with uh, the sets and all that kind of stuff, the building, they're the ones who need the food. So if there's going to be food for them, that's great. But it is a huge big difference in the States. I mean, there's tons of food, isn't there, Scott? There's like tables of it. Scott's like that. Yeah, I love it. Because <laughs> I don't want to go to the grocery store. <laughs> you love the grocery store, don't you? He hates it. What? Oh. <laughs> Scott's sitting there going to me because Superman is standing right there and Scott is not paying any attention to what I'm saying. <laughs> He's just rubbing Superman's pecs. <laughs> Four. Yes. Hi, I just want to say that you're perfect and I, uh, my question is, <laughs> true story, uh, yesterday I saw a guy get your name tattooed on his yes. chest. Yes, on his, his, above his pack. Yeah, like, it was exciting. Anyways, um, <laughs> so I didn't think you would think that was exciting. <laughs> you never know. Go on. Um, never mind. <laughs> What do you think of that, like, people getting that sort of tattoo? No, I, 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 I'm, the, I'm not judgmental. I'm, whatever you want to do, whatever floats your boat, but what I have to do, like, for instance, uh, Kelsey, who works at the table with us, she had to hear me say Tim because my lawyers want me to say this. I will do it, but you have to promise me that you're not using it to get checkbooks or credit cards. <laughs> no, seriously, I've had it happen. I signed someone's skin, and a couple weeks later, I had 40 grand taken out of my bank account. Seriously? Yeah, because they copied that and put it on a checkbook, and made a che an illegal checkbook, and were signing checks in my name. And it was not cool, so I always legally have to say it, because then if we buy you, we'll bust your ass. 
So yeah, so that was why, but I think it's great when people, I mean, I don't understand why people want my name tattooed to their body, but if, I know because you love me, it's really kind of cool, but I was like, you know, it's, I've been taken back by it. Because, you know, what happens when you're 65 and you know, things start to slide a little bit? It's no longer going to say John Barrow, but it's going to say Joel. Uh, removal clinics at the moment because in 20 years all these people who got tattoos they're gonna want rid of them because they're gonna be dragging on the floor. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Hi, um, I'm gonna see this one since it has to do with music. So, um,
Have Jack Harkness. There's no loss assumption in my past. <laughs> Jewish, Hasidic, Hasidic Jew, 
Jewish people start crowding around the fence. Mel Brooks comes out and he goes, for Christ's sake, get in! You're going to cause the war! <laughs> so we went inside. Most surreal thing I've ever done. Then I was in Germany, at the convention in Germany. <laughs> that would go viral. <laughs> so, yeah, but I loved doing it. It was great, and uh, yeah, wants have more fun. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, young man. Well, who's your favorite doctor? <laughs> now, that's the way to have volume in a question. <laughs> And you're not old enough to say that either. Uh, David, uh, because David was my doctor, he was, and David was the doctor that Captain Jack uh, flipped for the most, although I had a great time with Christopher Eccleston, I, David and I just had so much fun on set, because both of us were huge Doctor Who fans as kids, and for both of us, that was like a dream come true, and when we got the job, we both could not believe that from the little boys that hid behind the sofa to being grown men and being the characters that we had watched and grown up with to be playing them and be on, for me, to be on the TARDIS with the Doctor. The first day I walked on the TARDIS, I called Scott at home and I'm like, and I, I was, you know, texting everyone, I'm like, oh my god, I'm in the TARDIS. <laughs> it's huge. <laughs> it's a set, but to me, it was real. And when I stood in front of that door and walked in that front door, when the doctor gave me my own key, which I still have. <laughs> Scott, Scott thinks I'm a little nuts at this because he gets what I do, but he doesn't get that kind of, oh, oh behind it. <laughs> I have boxes full of things that I borrowed from the set. <laughs> And I said, but I'm just going to rub your leg. 
That's it. It's easy, right? No, because that's safe and it's polite. And we would, when we would kiss, bless Gareth's heart, he's of the generation. He's like, I don't care, just kiss me. I'm like, but I won't use stuff. He's like, I don't care. Let's just kiss. Make it look real. I'm like, thank God. Because he's very handsome. So, other story that I would with James Matt Monsters, I was, um, I, I kept adding takes onto it to kind of do this. <laughs> So I'm in this, this sequence with Gareth, and I'm going, oh, and I've got my hand on his pants, and I'm rubbing his leg, and Eva is meant to walk in, Gwen's meant to walk in and go, oh, dear God, and she walks away, right? Well, she kept going in, she walked in, first take, and I walk in, and she goes, So 
I don't say, the one person that I did really love that I got to meet, I didn't get to work with him, was uh, Gene Kelly. And I got to speak with him because for me as a musical theater performer, I wanted to be a guy who uh, looked like a guy on stage and was not, you know, of course I can be camp and outrageous, but when I'm watching a man play a man, I want to see a man. I really do. Unless the character requires me to be effeminate. Gene Kelly to me was the man who was a man, danced, looked masculine, was wonderful, and when I got to meet him, I literally squeed a bit. And it was, I, I, I have a photograph with him, and I, it was a proud moment of mine. So, amazing. But yes, thank you. Yeah, I was just on uh, YouTube uh, today watching old episodes of uh, British Pop here. Of who? Top Gear. Top Gear, yes. And an episode of Fifth Gear came up. Correct. The question is, were you actually laughing while I was rolling the car? <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's an episode of Fifth Gear, it's a, a show like Top Gear in the UK, and uh, um, I went on to Fifth Gear, and uh, they asked me what I would like to do, and I love cars. Um, I, I have ten cars. I, I've always wanted to have, uh, as a child, I had Matchbox cars, and I always said to my dad, if ever I can afford it one day, I want to collect real ones. So they're not big expensive cars, they're cars, everyday cars that everybody can afford, and I just like to have them. So fifth year asked me to go into, uh, uh, to do, they said, what do you want to do? I said, I want a rally race. Awesome. So I arrive, and there's a Subaru rally car there, and I walk in, and they say, hey, John, you want to buy the rally car? I'm like, how much is it? They're like, it's 125 grand. I went, I'll think about it. <laughs> Really think about it. So I get in the car, and I start driving. I've got my racing gear on, my boots. I look like something out of a rush. <laughs> Hot. Yes, I have that outfit at home too, right, Dad? <laughs> I keep all my outfits. We have a great time at our house on the weekend. <laughs> you never know whether you're Doctor Who fit gear or whether you're on Arrow. You're getting Peter's. You never know. Thank <laughs> you. 
this is the picture. <laughs> Honey, look at that, your dream come true. <laughs> Two superheroes. <laughs> and someone who needs rescued. <laughs> yeah, I think Superman's gonna need rescued in about a half an hour. <laughs> I'm worried, I'm worried, see the This is Scott. This is Scott, everybody. We have five more minutes. Do you want to ask a question or do you want anyone to want to ask Scott something? No. <laughs> question? <laughs> because my mom and dad and his mom and dad did it and we came out. Yay! <laughs> yes. This is for John. Yes.
<laughs> yes. Hi, Ben. Hello, how's your chest? It's, it's wonderful, wonderful, actually. This is the guy who got my name tattooed on his chest. I just want to say thank you very much. I appreciate it. We appreciate it. God bless and thank you.